Hi, this is Dana Rocky again over here in Newport Beach in our dental practice. And today I want to answer the question about root canals because the issue of whether root canals are effective or good for you or not is coming up more and more in my practice. So I pulled up a couple of slides, um, x-ray slides, to show you uh, where we want to go with that. Uh, this is an extreme case. We've got something wrong going on with three of these individual teeth, but at least I want to look at this tooth here. This is the second from the back on the lower left, tooth number 18. And the issue is that this patient called me in a lot of pain, and so we took the x-ray, and it's obvious right off the bat that we have an issue here. The darkened area around, the around this portion of the tooth is dental decay, a large cavity inside the tooth. And the real issue is it's very close to this thing right here, which we normally refer to as the nerve. This actually is dark because it's a hollow space inside the tooth, and it has vital living tissue inside there, pumping blood in, pumping blood out, and it's got nerve tissue in it too. So when the bacteria from the decay actually get in and infect the tissue that's inside the pulp chamber here, that's when we get uh, inflammation, swelling, and that's what your immune system does to uh, fix a problem, fight infection. It runs germ killers and other cells in here to try and fix this problem, and in doing so, we have swelling, and that is what we commonly refer to as inflammation and itis, and the technical term for it is a pulpitis. So as I say, this person calls, we take this picture, it's obvious why this, tooth, this person is in pain. However, the symptoms can be anything from zero to some cold sensitivity, to some lingering cold sensitivity, to some heat sensitivity, to some cycling on and off, a little bit of pain, all the way to excruciating pain. In 30, almost 35 years of dentistry, I've seen um, some of these that have been viciously sore, and we have to treat them, obviously, very quickly to get the patient out of pain. So this is a very straightforward case, large cavity into the nerve, we have problems, we gotta do something. Uh, we usually uh, look at this tooth, and I see that we've got a bulk of the tooth left here, should be able to put a restoration on this, probably a crown. So I would send this patient to the root canal specialist. They're gonna do a root canal here on this tooth and it is represented on the x-ray by these white lines going down inside the tooth here. And that should be all that this tooth needs here, this tooth. Now, I picked another case that's much more advanced, much larger cavity, much more of the tooth broken down. And here's this uh, front root coming up into here, one of three. And if you look closely, you'll see a dark oval around the tip of this root right here. This is what we call a P-A-R-L, periapical radiolucent lesion. Uh, lesion meaning it's um, circumscribed like this. Radiolucent means that it's dark on the x-ray um, and at the apical part of the tooth, which is what we refer to as the roots down here. So much larger cavity, much longer standing, um, much bigger uh, lesion or darkened area apparent on the x-ray. So in this particular case, yes, we could clean out this decay here and we could do the root canal and I could put a crown on here. But this brings me to the issue of whether root canals are good for us or not. And there's more and more talk regarding that. And so I'd just like to sum up at the end here by saying in this office here, we do not deal in generalities. And the key here is to treat each tooth and each person uh, with a medical history uh, on its own merits. Somebody that has multiple artificial joints or has cardiovascular issues really would not do well with a large active infection around their teeth. So that, in the best case scenario in this, may be to remove the tooth. Much larger area of the tooth broken down, very curved root, which is diff difficult to navigate for anybody doing a root canal on the tooth. In this case, it might be best to remove that. That way the infection is, in theory, um, healed in by the body, we put in an implant, and that sh patient should do very well. In this particular case here, um, much more of the tooth structure is viable. I don't see large areas of infection down at the bottom here. So when someone asks me, well, I, I don't want a root canal, I've heard a lot of negative things about that. And, um, you know, I appreciate those concerns. But here, I think each person and each tooth needs to be treated on its own merits. And we sit down, talk about what's the priority here, what needs to be done, um, an infection sensitive person, or something that I think can be fairly straightforwardly corrected with root canal therapy. So that's how we deal with it here in our office in Newport Beach. All right, thank you again for watching.